and through to its enactment today. I call uh, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Pleased to take another call on this um, bill. What well, was the Privacy Information Sharing Bill? Now, uh, several pieces of legislation, and one might say, in the absence of a comprehensive adoption of the Law Commission's uh, report on privacy and proposed privacy changes, what we now have before us in this third reading is a gallimaufry of legislation uh, dealing with the issue. And, um, Sir, this legislation does uh, three things of considerable importance. One is to relax the protections in the existing Privacy Act in relation to privacy principles 10 and 11. So whereas, and, and uh, Mr McIndoe, the last speaker, alluded to the fact that the, what was a protection uh, for um, agencies to release, release information in the event that there was a serious and imminent threat to public health and safety, uh, that has now been watered down to just a serious threat to public health and safety. Um, and I will come back to the significance of that, because while Labor is supporting this legislation, nevertheless the, rec the record should show that there remain some concerns, and in the event that a future Privacy Commissioner or a court should come to consider these words, then let the record show that uh, this House has expressed uh, some concerns about the legislation even as it stands. The second change is to create and allow for privacy sharing, sharing agreements between agencies, not just public agencies, but private ones as well, private agencies that are dealing with um, uh, public work, if you like, operating in the public arena. And then the third uh, change that is made, um, or, or third significant thing which relates to the privacy sharing, sharing agreements that I want to draw the House's attention to is that although the privacy sharing agreements are done by order and council and therefore there is a record of them and it is possible to get access to them, they can be amended without referral back to any of the parties throughout going through a public process simply by order and council. And that is another point uh, to draw attention to uh, as something that the, we need to be alert to uh, because it is, carries the potential uh, for abuse or for eroding, further eroding the rights to privacy that we have all come to expect under the uh, Privacy Act. So the point is this, and in relation to the privacy sharing agreements, and it has been made before and it, I'll make it again, and that is that in, the, in this day and age and in the modern state and uh, citizens operating in the modern state must surrender an, an enormous amount of personal information to the state. We accept that in order to get the benefits of, uh, of the state, whether through protection, whether through uh, entitlements and benefits, um, uh, for whatever reason. But we do release an enormous amount of information to the state. And if there is one thing that people want to have control over, want to make sure is secure and is protected, it is information about themselves. It goes to their identity. It is about who they are. They want to know to whom it has gone, for what reason. They want to be assured that it's going to be used for the right reasons. And they want to have some control over it. And so the Privacy Act was a very good way of putting a stake in the ground uh, because we, don't, we never had a developed law, uh, common law of privacy. And even in other jurisdictions more mature than ours, the legal jurisdictions, even their uh, privacy rights, common law privacy rights, developed in fits and starts and, and in lurches rather than one coherent uh, uh, stream. But we enacted the Privacy Act and that set a stake in the ground and that was very good. It was very important that people could understand that they could exercise control over the information that they surrendered uh, to public and private organisations. And so now we are doing uh, something else. We are, in effect, relaxing those protections. And so naturally, every citizen wishes to proceed cautiously and carefully, as indeed I think this House has by and large done uh, with this bill. But when it comes to inf information sharing between agencies, particularly state agencies, then we want to be clear that there are good safeguards around that. And those safeguards include that there is to be a deliberate 
and deliberative process uh, that it is to be the agreement is to be uh, obviously kept in writing and recorded and kept by whichever lead agency is in control and people can have access to it but it still raises the risk that people might give up information about themselves to an agency in order to get access to their support or their services or some sort of entitlement and that, that information could find its way wrongly disclosed to another agency. Or it might be that an official, a zealous official, misinterprets the extent of a privacy sharing agreement and mistakenly releases information on the, uh, in the mistaken belief that it is covered by the privacy sharing agreement. And so that means that the oversight of these sorts of processes needs to be very thorough. If there is one thing that we have learned in the last year, in 2012, the year of the privacy breach in the New Zealand bureaucracy, it is that our oversight and enforcement needs to be up to scratch and up to the mark. I'm not 100% confident that it is, that we can do better, that if you have a look at the breaches, and I think most of the breaches of privacy that we saw in 2012 were accidental. They were from public servants who were harried, overworked, stressed, uh, for whatever reason, not exercising due care and, and diligence, and allowed information to be wrongly disclosed. In some cases, they were risks of breach of privacy that were known in advance, but no action was taken. That particularly applies in the case of WINS. But it highlights the anxiety and, and the reason why people have anxiety about the information they give to the government, and therefore why the processes that we have dealing with information, managing personal information, and now uh, disclosing information between agencies in a more streamlined way, why we need to be very clear that the processes around those things, or the, the, uh, those mechanisms, are well understood, are clear, that they are followed absolutely to the letter of the law, and that there is good oversight and control of it. And so the Office of the Privacy Commissioner becomes even more important. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if there's one thing that we now should rightfully expect to see, it is a beefing up of the Office of the Privacy Commissioner, because my observation is that in response to the privacy breaches that we saw last year, that office struggled to deal with the complaints, to come to grips, in some cases with the magnitude of the complaints and the seriousness of them. And uh, a lot of people were left with a very uh, sour taste in their mouths about the way their privacy complaints had been handled by that office. And I don't blame that office. They are in a difficult position, uh, but they need some assistance and support if they are to come to grips now with overseeing what, what could be very extensive, very comprehensive and uh, very important agreements between public agencies. People are entitled to that assurance. They are entitled to know that in this new age where information can be disclosed very easily and very quickly in this electronic age, that there are proper safeguards around that information and that they have a place to go that they know will be responsive to their concerns and if they have complaints can respond effectively uh, and uh, with alacrity to their complaints and their issues. And so, sir, while Labor supports this legislation and we will be voting for it, let us not uh, avoid uh, the reality that there are ongoing concerns and anxieties about the way personal information is managed by the public sector and in their engagement with the private sector and that this legislation, uh, although it has the potential to do many good things and be very helpful and allow streamlining of processes between government departments, it also has the power to magnify and exacerbate uh, the risk of breaches of information and so the safeguards must be absolutely second to none, and the oversight by the Privacy Commissioner's Office uh, must be the best that it possibly can be. I call David Clendon. Mr. Speaker, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is a